Hey everybody, I'm Juliana and you're watching Sprocket Girl. Today I'm here with my friend Joel, aka Bearded Mountain Biker. This is the second time that he's uh, featured on my channel. Uh, the first time was during our garage session where we talked about how to change a tire on a mountain bike. And today I'd like to make use of Joel's knowledge again. Um, and we want to show you guys what you can do after a bike ride to really take care of your bike and make sure that it'll last you a good long time. <laughs> let's get into it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so our bikes are um, kind of at a different level of dirtiness right now. So I haven't ridden mine for a while. I think it's been almost a month and a half. And so the last time I rode it, it wasn't particularly muddy, but it was pretty dusty. So if you have a look at the bike, um, you can see it's a little bit dusty down here. I could use some cleaning up. Um, yeah, and there's definitely some dust and uh, grime that needs to come out of it, but it's in all in all, it's not in a really bad shape. So in this case, since my bike is not particularly dirty, I will probably just wipe it down with some all-purpose cleaner and a rag. Uh, but Joel's is obviously way more dirty and one thing that you could do in the case of a muddy bike like that is to take it to a car wash if you have access to one and just hose it down at a very low pressure. Um, we are not going to go to the car wash today, we're just going to hose his bike down with a backyard hose. But um, if you do go to the car wash, you want to make sure that you're not blasting water into or onto your bike and that you really make sure to use a very low pressure. Um, and the reasons for this, I think Joel can kind of explain to us a little bit better here. Yeah, so this is sort of a highly debated topic because it's so personal and you know subjective to what people think about, you know, what kind of pressure is too much pressure for a seal. So things that I like to think about before I start just blasting it at car, you know, car wash pressures are things that have grease or like a seal head with it. So your hubs are a big thing. Um, your headset is another susceptible piece. Obviously your shocks at the actual seal there, the rubber gasket, same thing on your rear. Your dropper, if you have a dropper post on your bike, if you do not have a dropper post on your bike, you'll have a collar or a quick, re quick release for that. And it's not an issue at all if you get water in there because chances are if you have that kind of a bike, they've built for water drainage. And then another big place that I like to check and make sure that I'm not just directly spraying is the rear hub. Also susceptible because it's been greased and it has seals. Then, then of course the last thing that everyone talks about is the bottom bracket. So on my bike and also on Juliana's bike, we have what they call press fit brackets, or sorry, um, bottom, yeah, brackets, which are actually pressed together versus a threaded bottom bracket. Threaded bottom brackets are usually a little bit better with moisture and direct pressure and water entry versus a press fit where you can still have some entry depending on how it's pressed and how much wear you have in there. So don't, of course, don't spray that directly with high pressures. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna run you guys through the um, cleaning items that we're gonna be using on my bike today. So the first thing is just an all-purpose cleaner. Um, this one's from Simple Green, but you can use any uh, brand that you want. Uh, it's handy because it's a spray, and we'll be using this on the frame, uh, anything that's rubberized, like for instance the seat, and also on the cassette. And then I have a nice uh, clean microfiber towel here, which I'll be using in conjunction with the spray. Okay. And then for things like the brake rotors and for the stanchions, we're going to be using isopropyl alcohol, also with a microfiber cloth. And any old brand will work for that. What we actually have here is some alcohol just filled into an old spray bottle, so it makes the applying a little bit easier. So we'll be using this too. And what are we going to be using the lube for? So the lube will be used right at the end after we've dried everything off and then we kind of want to just make sure it's protected from the elements. Um, this type of lube has, is wax based 
So it's, it's a little bit better with protecting against moistures and things like that when you ride. So we'll apply that after we clean everything off and dry it off. Um, yeah. yeah. And then we also have some other uh, utensils here. There's a sponge in case we need it. There's a toothbrush in case we need to get into some small spaces. And then we have this little like uh, old Tupperware or some sort of container that we can put uh, soapy water or warm water or anything like that into. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. What else? Um, yeah. The other thing we might be doing with the rag is flossing, and we'll talk about what that looks like as we go through that. But yeah, it's it's really nice to have a microfiber rag, rag that's really absorbent and also is not going to scratch something like the stanchion, which is kind of particularly um, you know supple, and you don't want to you don't want to mess that up because it'll mess up the seals. All right. But yeah. Oh, and then at the very end, if you want to um, dry your bike off. Um, or if you don't want to just like air, let it air dry, there are several different methods of doing that. You could use, for instance, a hair dryer if you have one available. You could use a compressor if you have that. Um, or you could also just use a dry, clean, and very absorbent towel, something like a dish towel mm -hmm. or an old beach towel or anything that's, that will absorb any moisture. And actually these microfiber cloths are not great for drying off uh, things at the end. So just use this for kind of applying um, cleaners or alcohol or anything like that, but then use some other sort of absorbent cloth for drying off your bike at the end. Yeah, in some cases, if you live in a drier climate, like in Colorado or like a Western state, you can probably get away with just letting it sit in the sun for five or 10 minutes and it'll be dry pretty quickly. But if you live on the East Coast or somewhere where it's pretty humid, you're gonna wanna dry it off before you store it because it will rust. Yeah, good point. All right, let's do this. Okay, right, so actually one of the first things that um, I want to do is to clean the chain even before we take the wheel off uh, since it has some nice tension on it. So one trick that we have here that um, I actually copied from Seth's Bike Hacks, which is an awesome trick for cleaning your chain, is to use two toothbrushes and just wrap a rubber band or a couple of rubber bands around the handles. You can easily just clamp the chain between the two toothbrush heads and use the pedal to move the chain through the brushes. So let's do that. Right. That's a great hack. Thanks, Seth. <laughs> Alright, so we want to start by um, by taking off the rear wheel. So we've already uh, loosened the tension on the chain here. Um, then we're just gonna, or I'm just gonna unscrew the back through axle and remove it. And then just shimmy this wheel out. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna t uh, just kind of jump in here for a second. So yeah, she's removed her wheel, everything looks good. One thing I like to do, and it's kind of good practice, is to examine everything. You don't usually take the rear wheel off of a bike, even if you have a different type of old school mount for a car or something like that. So it's nice to kind of just examine things, especially if it's carbon or like a you know, light aluminum to check mm -hmm. for cracks and any or nicks or dings or something you might have hit on a rock. Okay. Um, but this yeah, looks pretty advice. good to me. Yeah. Yeah, and the other thing I like to look at is how dirty these individual cogs are. Um, a lot of people overlook these on the cassette, mm -hmm. but they're very, very vital to how it performs, how it shifts. So when we clean this, we'll make sure to clean the, the little grit and grime off these teeth. Yeah, they don't look too bad right now. I think it was about a half a year ago or last summer, I did a really good, like thorough cleaning of the cogs. So they don't look too bad at the moment, but yeah. We'll make sure that we get most of the grime out of there. Okay, so Juliana is just cleaning the the rear triangle of the bike right now. Um, as she cleans it, so her bike is a rear triangle and the, the back is aluminum, and she's got a carbon front triangle. So as she cleans it, you're gonna start to see the actual individual welds of the aluminum. So don't be alarmed if you think this is carbon, this is aluminum. So it should look kind of bulgy around where it was been connected to the frame. 
But yeah, she's going through and just wiping everything down. Um, when she does that, she's gonna make sure not to touch the actual brake pads and squeeze them together for some reason, because while you have that rear wheel out, you never wanna squeeze these brakes with the lever or with pads themselves with your fingers because it'll mess up the cycling of how the fluid flows through the hoses. Yep. Um, but yeah, she's just gonna give it a nice thorough clean and uh, she'll move on to the front triangle. So what about the derailleur? Like, is it okay to spray it? Because I can see that it's really dusty in certain like nooks and crannies of the derailleur. Yep, so one thing I like to do, Graham, you wanna come around this way. So one thing I like to do um, as I'm going through this is look at <clears throat> how this thing works, right? So the shifting works and then this thing actually pivots and that is actually its own little um, bearing. So it's, it's spring loaded obviously, but one thing I like to do as I go through there um, is just make sure I can clean this piece off. Mm, okay. And then make sure your spring for the actual tension of the um, cable is not clunked up or you know Gunked gogged on with with stuff so everything moves you know well in that order so it's okay if i just spray it in here yeah and then just wipe the, the excess off it's pretty gunked up all right i'm just going to move on to the main uh part of the frame and just do the same thing here just kind of wipe it down it's not in terrible shape so i'm not going to spend hours doing this since after a bike ride i usually just kind of want to go home and uh, take a shower and relax. But you do want to make sure to take good care of your bike if you want to want it to last for um, a while. Oh wow, there's real mud in there. Yeah, so on her bike, she actually has um, what they call a chain guide on the front here. And so there's a little bit of extra, or a um, little less room to work the towel or that microfiber in there. Mm -hmm. So she'll do as best she can with that. Um, not a horrible issue because most of that you can kind of spray out if you need to, um, or you can use something called flossing method. And How do you do that? What's the flossing method? So, just like you would floss your teeth or something like that, you're just using a microfiber towel instead of an actual piece of floss. So you basically work it in between things so that you can work in action, kind of move things out of an individual area. All right, so we managed to get the uh, microfiber towel in here like a floss and oh my gosh look at all that gunk in there i should have done that way earlier that's a lot of grime yeah so microfiber rags are nice they're not horribly expensive you can get a good pack of i don't know maybe 15 rags i'm guesstimating there but uh, for like six or seven bucks at the local hardware store or even an automotive store same thing um but they're nice because they don't scratch things and they're they're they actually do what they're supposed to do and they clean surprisingly well, much better than just a normal piece of shirt or something, you know, an old piece of clothing. Oh, and also they don't leave like little uh, fibers and stuff on your bike or like they don't get snagged as easily on uh, the metal frame or metal parts of the bike, right? Yeah, it's a huge difference, especially when you start cleaning the drivetrain, you never want to use something like that for you know susceptible parts that might leave a straggly thread or something especially when you're doing suspension work as well so what i'm going to do next is clean the cassette also with some of this uh, multi-purpose cleaner and instead of spraying the cleaner directly onto the cassette um, which might cause pieces of grease or cleaner or whatever to get on the brake rotors um, i'm doing two things so for one one thing, or the first thing, is that I'm just putting a little cloth in between the brake rotors and the cassette just to make sure that nothing gets sprayed onto the back, onto the rotors. And the other thing, which was a good tip from Joel, um, I'm going to actually pour some of this cleaner into a container, a clean container. And then I'll just dip a toothbrush into here and then kind of scrub it like that. Yeah, and as she does that, it's perfectly well said. Um, another thing we probably don't want to spray necessarily directly is where the through axle comes through. Um, if you can notice, then if you see the inner lock ring here, 
is particularly a little more dirty. It's because the excess grease from the inner bearings has started to protrude and the dirt from the trails sticks hmm. to grease much more prevalently. And so you'll see that here. So okay. just a quick little reminder with the dirt there, just don't spray direct cleaner inside that. But it's okay to just dip the um, toothbrush in and kind of scrub around this? Exactly. Okay. The main reason why I dip and scrub instead of spraying. Dip and scrub. Yeah, that's, that works really nicely, actually. Yeah. And then a quick little trick as she scrubs, uh, she doesn't necessarily have to hold the cassette if she doesn't want to, if she can scrub in the other manner. Oh yeah, like this? Yep. Oh, that's smart. All right, I hadn't even thought of that. So see how she doesn't have to hold it? She can just go against the way it's gonna lock as if you were pedaling. Perfect. That's a great idea. Plus it kind of keeps everything in one direction as it comes off the cassette so you don't get sprayed in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> Not so, clean my bike. You can clean your bike. Um, so now that I've got it, like it's kind of soaking with um, cleaning fluid now. So would it be okay to spray the cassette with water now or is that a bad idea? No, that's a good idea. Um, you can do that. Just again, don't spray the inner workings of it. So just kind of like drip water over it kind of like that? Or? I would take a hose and spray in the direction that it's going to freely spin. So that uh -huh. as it comes back around, it's throwing the water off. Okay. If you spray this way, it's fine, but it won't it won't do much for you. It'll drip down and then just coat your 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 rim with grease. And for those of you who still run V brakes or rim brakes, that's not a good idea. So you want to make sure that you're still just thinking about where that grease is going. Okay. Now that we've sprayed off the cassette, um, we want to get rid of some excess water and a really easy way to do that is just to kind of bounce the wheel and get rid of all the drops. Anything else to know while you're doing that, Joel? No, that's good. Um, and then if you spin it with your hand, you can get any of the residual kind of off. But it looks pretty good to me. And then I just let that sit, you know, set it aside. We do live in Colorado, so it dries pretty quickly. but. If you live in somewhere else um, where it's a little bit more humid, I just take a nice clean towel and just kind of wipe in the direction you would do. Dab it. Dab it a little bit, exactly. Because you can't obviously get the thing inside there unless you take the cassette off. It's a lot of work, so just kind of dab away as you need. And the residual will just kind of take care of its own self. Great. <laughs> what are you doing, Joel? Like, there's a stand there. <laughs> okay, so Juliana has asked me a couple questions um, with regards to what to clean next. What I like to do now is focus on things that I didn't see before as I was going through and taking off the rear, um, or as she was taking off the rear wheel. There's some still some residual here on this front chain ring, and I like to kind of take get all that off so it's nice and shiny. Um, but the, the question begs, well, which rag do you use for that, right? Because we still need to cl clean the stanchions, front and rear, and then also the brake rotors of the bike. And so we don't ever want to use a dirty rag with grease and grime and dirt on a clean surface like a brake rotor because it just will just ruin it. You'll be $200 out of your pocket right, right off the bat. So yeah. never do that. Always use a clean one. Think about that before you clean certain things on your bike. So it would kind of make sense to do those things at the very end. Is, is that true? Exactly. Kind of like you can think about it in woodworking, right? Like if you were to use a, you know, a finer grit sandpaper at the end of the job so it doesn't just re-gouge what you just sanded down. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I poured some alcohol into a different container, um, have another toothbrush, and I'm gonna use that to scrub down my front chain ring, which is pretty dusty here, and I just wanna get it nice and shiny again. And I'm using the toothbrush and uh, container method again because it's a little bit easier to handle and I don't want to like spray it all over the place either so I'm just gonna do that and kind of rotate it as we go trying not to get the chain all hooked up here
Okay, so the last step, or one of the last steps is to, I just wanna wipe down the back brake rotor. It's a little bit of alcohol. Um, it might have gotten a little bit sprayed from when I was uh, cleaning the cassette and spraying off the cassette. So I just wanna make sure that everything is nice and clean back here. So I'm using this completely new and clean rag. I'm just gonna spray some alcohol directly on here and then just wipe that brake rotor down. So we don't need to go crazy here. Just wipe the outside off and also the inside a little bit in the direction of how the brake pads would be going around the rotor. And so we're done with this guy now. I'm just gonna set this aside. Uh, let it dry off a little bit more and then we'll put the wheel back on at the very end. So the last thing to do with the alcohol is to um, clean the stanchions and also use uh, Joel's flossing technique to kind of get rid of some grit and grime that might be around the seals, right? Yeah. So, um, just what I like to do is spray the rag mm -hmm. prior so that there's no residual that might run into the actual shock or um, suspension piece that you're flossing. Um, yeah, so there's plenty on there. And then when we floss, just kind of do what we did before. Um, and yeah, when you want it, and you can wipe the, the main part of the stanchion just normally like you would anything else. Yep, and then you've got the correct microfiber rag, so you don't need to worry about scratching the stanchion. This is kind of a fancy shock because it's got the Kashima coating on it, which is a little bit um, more bomb-proof than a regular old shock, but this would still would not hurt any other shock. It's the exact same thing you want to use. And, and then, then here is exactly what you want to do. Perfect. Yep, so she's flossing delicately that rubber seal that you see protruding from the actual main air canister of the shock. And there's definitely a lot of grime kind of gunked up in there. Yeah, it just kind of helps with um, how supple that, that initial stroke is on that shock. And then just, you know, ensures that not any more than really what needs to be worked into the shock will be doing that, so. And I'm just gonna kind of keep spraying this a little bit and using clean parts of the rag as I can so I don't get all the so I don't like reapply all the grime into those seals. Yep, so there's two main shelves here. The first shelf, if you will, I use air quotes when I say that, but it's basically mm -hmm, like where the rubber seal meets the actual stanchion. Right here, yeah. Yep, and then the second shelf would be where the air canister meets the actual rubber gasket. Okay, so we'll try to get into both of those. Yep. This is like way more detailed than I've ever really looked at my bike, so that's good that's practice right. for me. Yeah, it's surprising how many people overlook this and it actually really does prolong the life of the seals and how much you actually need to service your shocks. So what you don't want to do is work anything underneath mm -hmm. that seal. I'm trying or to- Or cut it, exactly. Like so she's doing a- Trying to kind of, at the same time as I'm flossing it, kind of move it out. Yep, she's doing a great job with that. You never want to use anything like a toothbrush, or something that might scratch the stanchion. You never want to use anything like that that might cut or break the actual rubber gasket there because if that thing gets cut, then you're risking pieces of, get, of dirt and grime getting stuck in there and then scratching the stanchion, which, care, which would cause air leaks. Okay. Do you think that looks pretty good? Perfect, yeah, it looks great. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. Just enough where it's nice and shiny. Um, and then you're good to go, yeah. And then as we, she's gonna do the front one, but as we uh, recoat everything, we'll show you what that looks like, but we will reapply some lube to this because we've dried it out with the alcohol. So we do wanna still coat that before we initiate the stroke and um, yeah, allow that stanchion to go back into the canister. Cool. Okay, yeah, that's good. So I'm gonna hit the dropper as well. This is another suspension part um, for all intents and purposes. So we wanna make sure that that seal head is taken care of as well. Um, people overlook this one a lot because it's something you don't really think about until your dropper stops working. But it actually gets majority of the mud thrown at it from your tire because of how it rotates. So we wanna make sure that one's clean too. Okay, so sounds like Juliana is ready for 
um, us to lube the moving parts essentially of our bike. The main things we're going to target are the chain and the front and rear shock stanchions as well as the seat post. Um, and so this right now we have is, is rock and roll. Um, this is a really popular chain lube because it's wax based and, and actually um, repels any kind of dirt things that might stick to a normal grease based or a little stickier lube. So we're going to use this for the chain. And we actually want to lube the chain, not the cassette. So one common misconception is to, oh, make sure the cassette's so greasy and everything, but you never want that actually greasy because the only part that actually matters that's moving, if you think about it, critically is the chain. So it's got actual moving parts in it. The cassette is a stationary piece. So what we'll do is we'll apply a few drops to the bottom of the chain on the inside because the inside of the chain is what's actually engaging on the teeth. We don't want to lube the outside of the chain or or in other words you don't want to drip from the top. Mm -hmm. You want to drip on the bottom. That's a good point. Because that's the inside. And then again you'll never actually grease up or lube up these teeth. You want them as clean as possible, free of dirt and grime. Same thing with the set. So we'll start there. So I like to give it a nice shake. Since it's wax based, all the wax will settle on the bottom of this bottle. And so we shake it up so it's mixed nicely, nice and bubbly. And just take the drop the piece off. And we don't ever want to put too much on there because excess is just going to cause more hassle and more dirt and grime that's going to collect. So we just want enough to get it spinning a little bit and then position it. So you get like two or three or four drops in there and just keep cycling it. And as it cycles, it'll work itself into the actual pins of the chain. Maybe go another one. And then what I like to do is with that rag that we used for the brakes, Yep, for the, for the actual rotors, which is primarily clean still, because we don't want to use the dirty one and work more dirt in. We want to use this and wipe off any excess chain oil on the actual chain, and it'll pinch it. We don't want to work this way because we want that to work into the pins. We want to pinch it this way. Oh, okay. So if you're using a quality lube, it also is a type of cleaner as well. So as I work this through, I'm cleaning the plates of the chain. And you can see that as they can become really, really shiny. And you can see all that coming off. So I'm gonna go through it again. And then we're good to go. Okay, so we've taken care of our chain nice and clean. Good little test is if you run your hand or your finger on it, you shouldn't have any residuals grease or dirt that comes off on your finger. So with a wax-based uh, chain lube that works well. And we showed you that earlier. So now we're going to uh, recoat the stanchions of the shocks. Now, really, really important. Notice that this says rock shocks and this says fox. You don't want to use rock shocks fluid on a fox uh, shock it will destroy the seals. So what we will do is use this for the front fork. Now this, we have done a, I've done multiple lower leg services. I've done one on Graham's, um, on his bike as well as mine a few times. And this is the correct fluid for that fork, especially the Pike 150, the 2016 model. And so it's zero weight 30 fluid patented by RockShox for, I don't know why, but it's called that. So we're gonna use the microfiber rag, just a little corner of it. We don't need too much on there, just enough so we can dip a little bit. And then what we'll do is just carefully wipe that back onto the stanchions so that when she does cycle this fork, none of the alcohol that we use to clean it with will be forced into the actual lower leg. So we'll do it for both.
And if you want to go above and beyond, you can kind of coat that seal a little bit with it. Yeah, cool. So the front fork is is ready to go as far as cycling it, so we can kind of cycle that and everything should be good to go. Nothing should be worked inside that seal. And then we'll do the same thing for the, the back shock. And for the dropper post, any kind of suspension fluid will work because it's less of an issue because this is a air um, this is an air dropper post and so we won't have any fluid to worry about with that as far as what's controlling the up and down movement so we'll just coat, coat the stanchion of that as well and do the same thing. So, so since I don't have any Fox fluid what would I put on the rear suspension then? So the rear suspension, we're going to keep it, we're gonna leave it alone, basically is what we're gonna do. Because we don't have the allotted correct fluid for that shock. Right now I have some at my house, um, which I could bring later, but we wanna make sure we use correct Fox fluid, it's really what it's called, for their shocks. So we won't use that today, but we will use the rock shocks for this dropper. There we go. On most rear shocks, you still have plenty of fluid in there when you cycle. There should be some left on the actual stanchion, but if for some reason it is dry, then we'll, we'll take care of that when we have the actual fluid for that. So make sure you use the correct parts for the correct things. Okay, so we're just gonna cycle it, make sure everything works well. Sounds good. We're good to go. You can see the residual that I did put on there. Oh wow. And is now coating the stanchion, so we're in good shape there. We'll do the same thing for the rear and for the dropper. So I'll do the dropper. You wanna do the dropper? Yeah. Okay. It's a little squeaky. A little squeaky. So that's nicely coated, and then if you want to, yeah, put some pressure on that. Nice. So we can touch it, it's a lot more slippery with our hand, and so we'll have some of that left on our fingers. Good to go. Okay, so I hope this was really helpful to you guys. Um, I definitely learned a lot today, thanks to Joel. And I think, so my main goal for 2019 for bike maintenance is really to make some time after every ride to kind of go through these steps that we did show you guys today and yeah i hope you guys will take care of your bikes as well thanks so much joel for helping out here that's great yeah no worries anytime hopefully it runs smoothly and does what it's supposed to do for you yeah we'll have to take it out for a spin soon <laughs> bye everybody thanks so much bye see ya What's, what's really good, Joel? What should we use instead of, what kind of rack? What, what I like to do if I'm running low on a, you know, on some extra funds for available rags, I like to use my old underwear. <laughs> but you don't want to use boxers because they don't absorb as well. You want to use the whitey tighties. Or your thongs, your old the thongs. The thongs are good, they're just too lacy. Yeah. So <laughs> you want to make sure that you use, um, you yeah, know, like really elasticated whitey tighties. Probably the extra larges. <laughs> they might have a couple uh, or some skid marks though, but just wash that out first and you're good to go. Oh my god. So it's some old socks? Yeah, sometimes some old socks will do the trick. They are a little more absor absorbent though. That's true. <laughs>